the sage or the master, the seer, the artist, the healer, the hero, the lover, and the earth mother or provider. These are the highest archetypes of the seven chakras of the meridian. Maybe some of them you associate yourself more with, you identify with, some of them not so much. Maybe some you might be embarrassed to be a part of and some you aspire, you wish you were this sort of thing. For example, uh, an earth mother provider might be like a gardener or a farmer. A lover might be a pickup artist. Vince Kelvin. A hero would be a warrior like Arash Bazaar. A healer would be a yogi. Uh, an artist might be, you know, a musician or someone who draws, or uh, that's obvious, kind of. I mean, uh, we all have elements of everything. You're artist of your own life. You're creating it, hopefully. And the seer would be like a sorcerer, like Frank White. And the sage, the master, that'd be like Sad Guru, you know, Lao Tzu, Osho, Eckhart Tolle, whoever. And we all have elements of it, all of them. But this is the essence of the sixth chakra, Ajna chakra. This is, Ajna means to perceive or to command. That would be the feminine and the masculine side of it. Although, supposedly, it's where the masculine forces within us, there's an Ida and a Pingala, Nadi. Nadi are these energy channels. And that's when you see yogis doing alternate nostril breathing, they're stimulating one Nadi versus the other Nadi. And these Nadis are said to crisscross up the chakra system. They're unified at the the root chakra, Mulatara, and they crisscross until they meet again at the Ajna chakra. And the crown is source, crown is unity. We'll get to that. So there's different identities of each chakra. You know, there's um, a self-identity. There's an emotional identity, an ego identity, a, a social identity, the... the um, expressive or artistic identity. So I just went root to top. Self, emotional, ego, social, artistic identity. And this is the archetypal identity. So the sixth chakra deals with images, deals with symbols, because an archetype is, you can't know an archetype, There's, but you can recognize its symbol. The archetype is a kind of universal frequency that is like the sage, the master, or the seer, or the, the healer. These are all very, you know, like the Buddha was a master. But the Buddha had a healer. That's where time massage comes from. Time massage, uh, the lineage, originates with the Buddha's massage therapist, his healer. And the farmers that provided the Buddha food, because the Buddha didn't cook. You know, maybe he ate figs. Or whatever but you get the idea and the archetype is a template it's a template that the symbols and experiences around you in material reality they constellate around this archetype this is how you're gonna see auras guys you gotta understand your archetype you gotta understand the shadow aspects of your archetype or the shadow aspects of your personality which are just aspects of archetypes because every personality trait fits somewhere uh, as an archetype you know like the the rebel would be an anti-hero you know and it's, it's negative is sometimes subjective right but if the hero aspect of you is repressed you become rebellious and destructive towards you know culture society ethics who knows what you're because in the destructive path it's like a, a tornado it doesn't it takes no names it just it's like berserker i was telling somebody about berserkers the other day berserkers are these um i forget if they were viking or nordic but they would wear special wolf um 
or an, just animal skins to designate them in their own tribe as the berserkers. And they would trance themselves before they go into battle, so they would they would feel no pain, but they had no distinction. They couldn't tell friend from foe, so they'd just kill everything, everything around, just slaughter. And there was nobody around them, and then they would come out of it eventually. And that was what it meant to go berserk. So, yeah, the, a repressed hero archetype might become a bit of a berserker. So, it's important to understand that what we want to do with the third eye is bring it into balance so that we're not projecting images. These are called illusions. If we're, hold on, if we are uh, holding frozen an image in our mind of where we want to go, what we want to do, or of another person, you see this a lot in relationships, they'll, they'll hold an image, a projection of what they really want the other person to be like, but that other person's not like that. That's an excessive six chakra. Uh, it could also, there's a denial of what happened. And there's a denial of people's behaviors. Um, that's a repression. And a repression is a deficient six chakra. Now, it doesn't, we're using the sense in that a deficient is not clearly observing what's happening. And an excessive is um, too liberal with the boundaries of understanding. And so it's less about healing that than it is about developing it further. So, uh, you know, I'll give you a couple exercises at the end of this video for both sides of it. And, well, I'll just get into it right now. Why not? Because our final outcome is to have a sense of a personal vision. You know, that is an imagining. You gotta imagine your future. It's not gonna change unless you can imagine a change. Because anything that happens from the, the natural world around you is, um, it doesn't change what's within you. You, got, you gotta change what's within you first. And then shit might happen around you, but it's about on the long term. It's about on the long term, where are you headed? So little events are just, it's insignificant in the long term of a vision. And to really have that vision, this is getting into law of attraction, which I'll go deeper into um, in the future. I don't know when exactly. But for now, you gotta understand that what we're doing is we're honing the sixth chakra so that we're aware of archetypes, we're aware of the shadow aspects of our archetypes, we're, of our personality, and we're able to see more clearly the seer, right? See more clearly the underlying chakra system, okay? So, if you've ever felt, if, if when I talked about repression, repressed emotions, if I talked about, when I talked about denial, if this resonated with you, if you feel like maybe sometimes you're overly rational or maybe you hear that a lot in your life somebody tells you you're you're overly analyzing it if that's something you know once in a while it's not a big deal but if, if you hear that consistently or have heard that consistently that's pointing toward a a need to blossom your intuition a bit more which intuition would be just like an unconscious pattern recognition. You're recognizing a pattern in your life experiences and it's unconscious, but it, it shines a light. Intuition, illumination. And something to help you with this is a simple meditation because, you know, we haven't quite gotten to meditation because it's possible for y'all to go crazy. It's possible for y'all to become overly energized. It's possible for y'all to more deeply ingrain your samskaras. It's, you know, meditation is not an end-all be-all solution. It's a piece of a, of a linear puzzle. And seeing as how a lot of you aren't into the same kind of yoga as me, I am giving you ways to clear your energy that doesn't involve bending and breathing like I do. Because I do it to an extreme. I was an athlete. I was a hero. That's, that's what I did. So... This very simple, easy meditation, it's easy to find, it's called Chataka, 
which is a, a kind of kriya also. It's where you stare at an object until your eyes tear and beyond. Uh, a favorite object of mine is a candle, so you stare at the base of the flame of a candle. Beyond when your eyes water. Your eyes water, maybe you blink, you, whatever. You, you just try not to blink, and I usually time myself. I never go more than 10 minutes. I mean, I have, but you end up... Make sure you stare at the base of the flame, not into the flame. And if you don't, I, sometimes I use incense. I'll stare at the incense stick. It's got to be dark, you know, uh, like while it's lit. You can, you know, Frank White taught me you can uh, draw a dot and make a circle around it on a white piece of paper and just stare at the dot. Or if nothing's around you, you just stare at an object. It's, it's tricky if you just try to stare off into space because your eyes will move and that naturally lubricates it. So we're trying to develop pointed focus. And... While you're doing this for less than 10 minutes, you can affirm to yourself, I see clearly. I see clearly while you're staring. You know, I don't want to creep you out, but I'll stare for a second. I see clearly. Good. Okay, so for the other side of the coin, if I was talking about delusions, uh, which are just an agglomeration of illusions, basically uh, kind of constellated around a theme. Vince Kelvin talks about delusions all the time. And, or if, I, if I'm talking, if I mentioned, um, if you're a little insensitive, if people tell you that maybe you're insensitive, like you're very smart, but you're insensitive, that's pointing to an excess. For, for you, I would say, um, and really both, both kinds of people should do both of these exercises, but I would say dream, dream logging. So do some dream logging. Yeah, definitely both people, because what happens is most people are just polarized in their sixth chakra. So they exhibit, you know, probably everybody who's watching this is resonating with both of those things. So go ahead and do some dream logging also. And the dream logging, you know, first, first you um, make sure you have a pen and a paper or something to write with next to your bed. Don't move when you wake up in the morning. Or if you move and then you recognize you had a dream, go back to where you were. And uh, that you can the night before affirm, affirm to yourself before you go to sleep, I'm going to remember my dreams. I will remember my dreams. And here's a little trick. I'll give you a little trick. If you're really serious to help you remember your dreams before you fall asleep, retrace your day in reverse. Starting with the, the most recent event and going backwards to the beginning of your day. Then you affirm, I will remember my dreams. When you awake, you write it down. And write it in terms of your senses, like uh, what did you smell, taste, see, hear, feel. And... Anytime, you know, if you want to draw something, that's cool too. Drawing helps because I, I won't go too deep into it. I want to keep this video, video is already super long. So you could start to investigate the symbols for yourself, what meaning they have for you. And this is really good if you have a partner too. It's a really cool ritual to share your dreams when you wake up. Uh, I, I would caution against interpreting each other's dreams. It's very sensitive and intimate. It's, it's more intimate than sex, but... Uh, a kind of enthusiastic interest in what your partner was dreaming just like genuine curiosity that's really healing and let's see anything else okay so we went through archetypes for each of the chakras investigate for yourself which one you associate yourself more with you identify most with I gave you two uh, contemplative practices. I hesitate to call Trataka a meditation. It's a precursor. You'll start to, anybody who meditates, if you do this exercise, you'll see the similarities and feel the similarities. Um, but for now, basically, I'm just giving you an exercise to focus and an affirmation I see clearly. And dream logging. So uh, that's all for now. I got to go train now and definitely do uh, subscribe to the channel. Share this video if you found it useful. And 
Uh, until next time, from Kabbalah, India, namaste. Thanks, Flynn.